Welcome back to another Axis 72 video. In today's video, I'm back with another interview, and I'm here with Harry Matthews. Harry, how are we? All good, mate. Yeah, I was just wish I'd, uh, I'd known that he was going to be on Zoom because I'd have brought my laptop and uh, he'd have seen me a bit better, but I'm in my car now, so no, yeah, I'll good. do my best for you. It's all good, it's all good, and uh, maybe if we end up doing another one at some point, we can. Uh, it might be able to see a bit better then, but either, either way, it's still all good. Uh, so, am I right in saying you're a uh, a 35 year old light heavyweight who's 17, 67, and 5. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. And so if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so. That would be if you're that video. And let's get straight into it. So I'm going to start with a question which you always like to start off with, and that is why did you start boxing? Originally, I started boxing because I found a love for it when I was a young kid. Um, met a boxing coach who became like my mentor, a guy called Sean Asquith. Mm -hmm. uh, he trained me. Um, uh, along with another guy called Glenn Banks and Neil Armand. I had a couple of trainers, you see, but mm -hmm. Sean Asquith from Leeds was the guy who got me involved in it. Um, and he was uh, kind of like my main mentor that I'd go see. Um, he couldn't see me all the time, but uh, we used to go stay at his house, train in his garage. He was a bit like my Mickey. Um, and then uh, Glenn Banks is a guy that I met in the gym who was a, a, a amateur boxer coming sort of like to the end of his career. And then he started doing a bit of training with me. Mm -hmm. He used to take me to St Paul's as a young kid, otherwise I never would have got there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, uh, and then he sort of later became my professional trainer. But Niall Armand was also my amateur coach, who became my professional trainer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and like I say, with these three guys in my life, they were, you know, they were, they were great for me. I mean, Neil Armand, I'm not, he's not part of my team anymore, but he's still a friend, um, and he's, you know, he's doing big things with the amateurs, and he's got a guy called Craig Derbyshire that he runs. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Banks lives in the same city as me. Me and him are like brothers, mm -hmm. um, you know. And he's been in my he's been in my boxing life for you know as long as I can remember. There was a little bit of a break when I went to Bob Shannon mm -hmm. um, for sort of three or four fights um, when I was undefeated. But in the end, I ended up going back to Glenn Banks because Glenn Banks knows me better than anyone, mm -hmm. and obviously he's become my manager and he looked after me quite well. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and obviously you know I started off professional boxing. To be, you know, I wanted to be a British and world champion, European champion, all the rest of it. Got to nine and zero, had a great start. Um, then just kind of, you know, work life kind of took over a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't be training. I wasn't able to train around world champions and stuff. Um, didn't have a sponsor. Um, and then kind of, you know, I went down the wrong path for a little bit. Um, and then decided that I was going to become a journeyman. Um, but. Ultimately, when I decided to become a journeyman, I also decided that I was going to become an actor mm -hmm. as well. So that's what I've been building up. I've been building up my acting career. I do a bit of modelling as well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, my main job has been like a personal trainer as well. So I've been able to be flexible. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I've made more of a name boxing on the road as a journeyman, boxing some of the top names. You know, Chris Eubank Jr. is always the one that mm. people remember because I went the distance of him over six rounds. And at the time, you know, he was sort of getting his name out there. Yeah. Um, I had that, that fight with Jamie Cox where he did me in two rounds, but I had three days notice for it. Mm. I didn't have no training or anything, and he was, you know, boxed for the world title. Yeah. Uh, you know, I boxed people like Jack Cullen, um, but he, you know, Nick Blackwell went 10 rounds with him. Uh, most of the top-end people, you know, I went the distance with and gave them a good account of myself. Mm -hmm. um, still enjoying it now, still train all the time. Um, and just my aim was to kind of get to 100 fights mm -hmm. and maybe leave it after that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I can be part of the Centurion Club, be the actor who's had a, 100 fights. Um, you know, as you can see, I'm still able to string a sentence together, yeah. which is good. I've still got my looks and my faculties intact. So I decided that, you know, boxing is one of them games where, you, you know, you don't want to be doing it past a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, I still live the game. And I still enjoy it, um, and I'm still passionate about it. Glenn manages me well. So, you know, like I say, we'll get to the 100. I've got my 90th fight this weekend mm -hmm. against Darren Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, who I fought before, did four rounds of him. So, you know, we'll just sort of go from there, really. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That, that's all great. That's great. And so, well, I mean, of course, you've, you've said some big names in which you fought there. And so what would you say has been your toughest test today? Uh Actually, do you know what? The toughest guy I fought, well, the, the best guy I fought was a guy, uh, again, weeks notice, job come in. Maybe wasn't paid as much as what I should have been, but I boxed a guy called Jimmy Kelly okay. and he stopped me in the third round. Uh, he was class. 
mm. southpaw. Just first round, I didn't think it was too bad, and then the second round, he you know he upped it and caught me with a good body shot, and I sort of went down and then sort of got up and beat the count. And then the third round, he sort of come out and you know threw some little looping shots, caught me on top of the temple. It was Christmas coming up, and I just was. I thought I might have passed it. Yeah. Again, I've had a week's notice. I was meant to be boxing a one and zero prospect, mm-hmm. and I went the fight from being a, it went from fighting a one and zero prospect to then fighting a guy who was like twenty eight and two. Mm. You know, boxed Liam Smith. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it was just one of them. But yeah, I've had some yeah, I've had some good experiences in, in boxing. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it'd be good to to leave it on a good note. Probably sell tickets for my hundredth fight. Um, and sort of, you know, come to to do the damage because, you know, I've shown in recent times if I want to turn up and win, I can still. Mm. You know, I'm not just there to lay down. Um, there is fights where I've turned up and I've done my job. You know, where I've been told kids sold a lot of tickets, so you know, we'd rather he didn't get beat, just make a good yeah. show of it. So that's what you do sometimes. Not mentioning no names or anything like that, but you know, it does. It does happen sometimes. Journeymen are there to test the prospect. If mm. they go beating him, they're not going to get booked. Mm. So, no, definitely, that's that's understandable. And so, but the, but, sorry, sorry, but, no. the, but the prospect they have to worry about selling all the tickets mm. because before they get paid, they've got to cover my end. Yeah. They've got to cover the promoters, promoters person, what have you, and then and then they, and then they get their own and they get a percentage at, at the end of that, and it's going to be very hard. So they're doing a lot for nothing at first. To be able to hopefully get that title shot, which is where I was a lot of years ago, mm-hmm. um, you know. So definitely, yeah, it's tough on both ends of the spectrum. But I mean, of course, I believe you you had about nineteen, twenty fights last year. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, and so of course, I mean, to be that active in a year, you have to be quite well conditioned. And so, is that something that you focus quite hard on in the gym? Well, yeah, I mean. Because I'm either if I'm not training myself, I'm taking people on the pads, mm. um, and I'm always drilling it. I'm always going through it, and you know I don't really, you know, if I go if I do go out with my mates, I don't, you know, I usually end up driving. Mm. You know, I might have one or two, um, but I always make sure I'm, I'm all right to train the next day. Mm. And I'm always, I still feel like I'm still improving sometimes mm. when I'm doing stuff. And you know, me and my coach, we we still take every opponent seriously. You know, we never go in there thinking it's going to be easy. Yeah. Sometimes we go in there thinking it's going to be hard and it's easier than what we thought. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, I always want to go in there and do a good job and still, you know, have pride in myself and give a good account of myself. Otherwise, to me, I don't, I don't think I'd want to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's fair. And well, of course, you have gotten the 17 victories. And so kind of out, out of them victories, which one would you say you've performed your best in? Uh, I boxed a guy called Ben Davies mm-hmm. at uh, Barnsley Metrodome mm-hmm. and I beat him over 10 rounds mm-hmm. um, and that fight for me was I just turned up I had everything everything I needed I trained solid for the 10 weeks it was a, a central area title eliminator wow. um, and then I beat him and then eventually the champion retired so they wanted us to fight again mm-hmm. um, as the title and then halfway through camp Ben Davies decided that he was going to retire um, you know, no disrespect to him. Mm. He's a good guy. He did what was right for his family. He just wasn't able to give it um, the time that he needed to dedicate to it. So therefore, I kind of thought like I should have been should have been the champion, really, because you know he retired, the champion retired. So I had I won that eliminator, yeah. and then they made me wait to, to box someone else. Uh, I went to go and box uh, Daryl Sharp, mm. and then somebody got stabbed in the audience. So uh, basically, on that night, and so then the can- show got cancelled. We got paid and sent home. And then I had to wait again to box Christian Quinciona. I boxed mm-hmm. Christian Quinciona, thinking I'd, wait, I'd beat him. Mm-hmm. I, had, I thought I'd won. Um, close fight, but I thought I'd won. Mm-hmm. Um, and they give it to him. Um, so I was a bit unlucky, unlucky not to get the belt, really. Mm. Yeah. So, and I decided to just keep boxing on the road because I'd sort of had a, other aspirations of, of mm-hmm. doing the, the acting and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's fair, that's fair, and of course, I mean, being being the away fighter at times, them kind of decisions, they don't always go your way, and so how tough can it be to be an away fighter? Uh, just go in there, expecting that you're not going to get a good result, even if you feel like it is, but sometimes the crowd tells all, mm. the crowd always tell you, you know, oh, I thought you won that fight, yeah. you know, so they'll always, you know, as long as the crowd are happy mm. with what they're saying, that's 
that's kind of good enough for me. And if you know what you're getting paid, mm-hmm. it's kind of it's it's, it's a job. Mm-hmm. And like I say, it, you know, you just move on to the next one. I don't think about it too much. I just put it to the back of my mind. Move on to the next. On to the next. For me, it's about getting the number one hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I get a few wins along the way, that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've had a draw and a win in recent times, which were good. The one that I won dominated the kid. Um, and yeah, you know, it was it was a nice one to be able to look back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And so, of course, you've got this upcoming fight. I believe it's in a few weeks now. And so, how's things going for that? How's preparations? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm fighting on Saturday. Uh, sorry, I'm fighting on Friday. Okay. So, tomorrow's a weigh in. Okay. And then I'm fighting Darryl, Darryl, Darren uh, Johnson on Friday night at six okay. rounds. Uh, the Crown Plaza on a Sam Kynick shot. Mm-hmm. Should be a good fight. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I've done everything I can do in the gym. Um, you know, it's just about. Go turn up, making the weight tomorrow, and um, just enjoying it really. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's great. And so, I mean, of course, you've oh, quite a bit of time. Yes, definitely. And of course, you've had lots of lots of different fights and uh, lots of different rounds. And what would you say? Do you prefer fighting the four rounders, or do you prefer like a ten rounder fight? Uh, from a, a work point of view, four rounders are always easier to get through. Mm-hmm. Uh, six rounds is going to be a bit tougher because obviously, you know, I've got a kid who's decent and. When you're a decent pro, you sort of get better as you go along. But like me, I'm always better. The longer the fight goes, the better I am. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, unless I had a fully camping, I wouldn't really want to be doing 10 rounds. I would mm-hmm. do 10 rounds if there was a title shot thrown in front of me and it was a decent payday as well. I'd, you know, I would, I'd, uh, you know, I'd put my time and effort into that. Mm-hmm. But the four rounders are kind of easier to manage around my life at the minute. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. And so I'll leave with this final question, which I always like to ask. You've got a little bit of a platform here. Would you like to shout anything out? Would I like to shout anything out? Just basically thanks to my manager, Glenn Banks. Mm-hmm. You know, he treats every boxer that he's got, you know, fairly. Um, look out for my acting mm-hmm. at my Instagram page. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harry Matthews, pro boxer. Mm-hmm. Because um, that's obviously what I want to be, you know, doing in the future, kind of thing, and mm-hmm. advertising myself there. Um, and yeah, just kind of, yeah, that's about, that's about it, really. <laughs> mm. No, that's great. And so, yeah. I appreciate this. And uh, maybe when you reach your hundredth fight, we can come back and do a return interview. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you can ask me a bit about the films then as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. So, talk about it. But yeah, nice one. Um, big shout out to everybody who's listening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, thank you for the support of the journeyman. Actually, no, I'll give it. I'll give a shout out to the journeyman cave because mm-hmm. they they did me a podcast and it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, they they are the people that are giving the away fighters a voice, um, and they're promoting them as, as the real unsung heroes of boxing because you know, without them, there won't be there won't be the shows. The mm-hmm. fighters won't get as many fights as they get. You know, the guys that can just be at the end of the phone at the last minute turn up. Um, oh, I'll tell you what, I'd like to shout out to Pucci on his last fight as well. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to be there, but I think he's fighting on the 25th of March. I'll be in Thailand, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, you know, big respect to Pucci. Um, set an example to all the all the journeymen out there and getting out with his faculties as well. Mm-hmm. So well done, Pooch. Mm-hmm. Definitely great. Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for watching. If you're on the round here and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you do indeed like it, and thanks for watching.